folks. Welcome to It Matters Radio. I'm Ken Ween, and I'm joined today, as always, by my wonderful co-host, Monica Brinkman. And Monica and I today are in turn joined by one of our favorite guests, returning guests, Lawrence Chow. Uh, Lawrence is a TV personality and a movie personality. And he has recently, in the last year or so, been, um, well, he made a short film called Justice for Vincent. And now he's been taking it around the circuits and uh, winning an awful lot of awards and great responses at all of the, all these festivals. I, I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> and new ones. Hey, there's the proof. <laughs> oh, I like that's a pretty one. This is like workout during COVID time and thing. It's the humanitarian award that ah. came out of the blue. Yeah, this you can take cool. your awards, right? Work them out. Sorry, you guys asked me to bring him. Sorry, bro. I did. I did indeed. I will take full responsibility for that because when I say, hey, this guy is really the real deal, other people think so too. At least enough to send him some time. <laughs> well, back at you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me back again and again and again and again. Oh, I <laughs> love having you. And of course, in a sense, we were just talking, folks, before the show started, very briefly, uh, about, well, the topic of the show, which is not just Justice for Vincent, which we'll be talking about. It's a wonderful short film, uh, and it has to do with this broader subject of recognition of Asian Americans, and particularly recognition of the prejudice and the animosity that is being directed toward them now be in this time of COVID-19. And I, I have to, I, we were using a word before, uh, the word mortify, and uh, I am mortified. I am also. Yeah. That, my nation, my country, and people of my, uh, what I called the other day, tutti fruity skin coloring, uh, uh, are s treating others this way. I am mortified that we have a president in the White House who casts aspersions and makes slurs against uh, people from Asian countries. I don't even think the man has enough sense to understand there are many different <laughs> groups of people from Asian countries. Yeah, yeah, and Ken, that's really important because so many people, they, they call, you know, individuals a certain uh, nationality without even knowing. And I think even Justice for Vincent brings that up. You know, oh, yes, that's exactly, in fact, that's the, the basic thing behind. So let's start by, Lawrence, if you would just remind our audience, because we have talked about this show, this movie before, but would you remind them what Justice for Vincent is about? Uh, Justice for Vincent, or JFV uh, for short, uh, is inspired by a true story. Um, Vincent Shin, a Chinese-American uh, citizen, uh, Detroit, 1982 was uh, bludgeoned to death by two um, auto workers, Caucasian auto workers, at a time when the so-called Japanese auto invasion was uh, compromising the Detroit automotive industry. Um, allegedly mistaken for being Japanese, hence being murdered, although he was Chinese. Uh, the murderers were let off with a mere $3,000 fine and a three-year probation. Uh, and this sparked the first uh, and the largest pan-Asian civil rights movement in America in modern history. And um, eventually uh, they waged a campaign for justice, i.e. Uh, a federal civil rights case in 1984, which uh, the mother, Vincent's mother, Lily, managed to um, succeed and win a conviction against one of the killers 
who was sentenced to 25 years in prison. The other one was acquitted, his stepson. However, in 1986, it was overturned. And to this day, uh, neither of the two murderers have served a day in prison for uh, murdering Vincent Chin. So this story in our community um, really cut like a knife. And it was the first time that um, it galvanized people uh, the Asian people to speak out. And eventually um, it gained national attention in the 80s and it sparked um, basically a color coalition of protest uh, and demand for justice, which coincidentally is happening now in the country with the murder of George Floyd and other African-Americans uh, and the Black Lives Matter movement. So there's a correlation that's going on with um, civil unrest and uh, social injustice. Um, so it was a timely film for us, but then also with the age of uh, coronavirus, it's even, even more timely because in some odd way, I kind of foreshadowed the um, Asian xenophobia uh, that we spoke about in our film, but also is happening now with COVID-19. And in the film, uh, there is talk about how uh, the Asian people are broad stroked you know, in one swath were just Asian. They don't know the difference between Japanese, Chinese, Philippine, Vietnamese, uh, Cambodian, whatever, whatever. So it's just a swath of like, you Asian immigrants are stealing our jobs, are causing trouble, blah, blah, blah. And um, uh, with the Vincent Chin story, it was race and economics. And then with now with COVID, it's also race a health issue that's um, impacted the econ economy and has sparked a lot of racial backlash towards the Asian community. Uh, so here we are. Let's talk. You're telling us that um, there's been quite a few incidents, mm. but you know, you're not really putting it on the media. You have to really search to find those um, instances where. Yeah. It's, you know, if you turn on CNN or ABC or CNBC, Fox, they're not going to show a lot of Asian uh, hate crime stories uh, uh, because of coronavirus. However, if you read the print media, there are a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but there are reports. New York Times. I read the Times, LA Times, San Francisco Chronicle. Right, Washington Post. You know, they will have stories, but... Because of social media, uh, we as Asian Americans are very in tune with what's going on uh, with uh, the, the upsurge in Asian hate crimes in the age of coronavirus. You know, for example, when it, when COVID first um, took foot in America in February, March, you know, at, at, at its peak, you know, in New York, um, uh, people were getting, uh, Asian people were getting attacked. An old lady would be crossing the street and she would get punched. Uh, stores have been vandalized. Elderly men have been beaten up. In California, an elderly Korean man was beaten on a bus. In Texas, uh, a Burmese family, including um, a child of two years old, not a Chinese family, Burmese American family, uh -huh. shopping and, uh, and uh, was was stabbed by a man claiming that they were infecting America with coronavirus. And these are Americans that they're attacking. That's what gets you. I mean, they're being affected just like everybody else with the virus. Well, you know, we see exactly. we see Native Americans being told to go back where they came from. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this <laughs> these things don't know what it means to be an American, which brings up uh, another. What uh, a few years ago. My wife and I had the wonderful pleasure of going in San Diego to see uh, George Takai performing in his play Allegiance, which is about his life and how his family was removed to concentration camps because they were of Japanese extraction. And a uh, very powerful play, by the way, folks, if you, get, if you ever get to see it, live or, or on uh, video. And uh, again, the same idea, but, but it is this long history. There is a, was the Chinese and Japanese Exclusion Act. There was a horrific treatment of families of Filipino families, of these people who served. They, they, when the Philippines were overrun in the Second World War, ah. when the Philippines were overrun 
in the Second World War, uh, Filipino men came and left and to fight with the American forces. Yes. And uh, they were promised after the war that those who wanted to come here could bring their families here. And, uh, oh no, we never said that. Oh, well, the, your, your son who was only 14, that is now 18, so he's too old, we can't bring him. Yeah. And I and, yeah. <laughs> like they, they said they would bring their Chinese brides and families over after the rare world, never happened. They reneged on that. So, and they reneged on their promise that they would ship them back, and they never did that. So, and Korea, I mean, <clears throat> in Vietnam, look how many stood by our soldiers' side and fought. Mm -hmm. And when they come over here, people are treating them terribly. Yeah, you know, that's the problem with racism is that, uh, well, first of all, it's illogical. Um, you know, people are discriminating against someone because of a pigmentation of their skin. But that's so superficial. But more than that is that they don't look at minutia, nor do they look at acts. I mean, the Vietnamese that were fighting with the Americans were fighting the communist Vietnamese. Yes. Right? <laughs> a lot of Asian Americans who served in World War II, uh, Lily uh, Vincent Chin's father served in the military in America. Mm, and you never see that in the movies, right? Whenever you see the American armed forces going to war in a, in a war movie, <laughs> there's no... Well, well, you, you do see, see a couple, and one of the most interesting is Go For Broke. Which was, of course, about the the Japanese American uh, unit that was won more won more awards than and more honors than any other unit. But when they were sent to fight, what nobody tells us the rest of the story is that they were deliberately sent into a situation where it was believed they would all be killed, mm. and the SOBs defying all logic, <laughs> defying all military planning, <laughs> instead went, managed to rescue this, I believe it was a Texas battalion, Texan battalion, that had been written off as lost. Oh, but we have to send somebody, well, we can get rid of the Japanese this way. And that's what they did. And instead of being killed and allowing the American, the other battalion, they pr proceeded to rescue them, making them an incredible, but you know it isn't of course it isn't let's just you know it isn't just racism against asians i mean we also see almost nothing of the the black who have served our country uh, the native americans i mean now we talk about the code talkers mm -hmm. and oh the navajo no what's it folks it wasn't the navajo code talkers there were code talkers from about half a dozen different tribes yeah, I mean, it was American, well, Native Americans. You know, Ken and, and um, Lawrence, it all stems from what you are taught in your life, what you are surrounded with in your life since you were born. And I know my dad who fought in the war, I can remember him just calling names to Orientals. You know, I, I think he were, and I, I apologize for this, but he used the word jinx mm -hmm. all the time. And he had an anger in him against all people. And that gets, you know, brought to the next generation, which was me. But of course, you know, I, I there was a point where I realized that people are people and have my own mind to think. But we have to stop that. Yeah, I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I just don't know what um, I don't know what the solution is in terms of ending racism. Um, I think we're uh, beginning because it's coming to the surface. Yes, it's with a turmoil, mm. and there's a reason for that. I I think the the new generations, some not, but there's a larger majority that or the more progressive thinkers and more liberal thinkers, they don't teach their children the same way. I'd agree with that. And I think I th eventually when we're all intermingling with each other, you know, and marrying each other, it's not going to matter what your race is because we're all going to probably be brown people. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no more tutti fruity. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know what I'm saying. I, I'm that's not going to happen. You know, like that. But it, I mean, it, we're there's... mixing now. We're starting to understand people as an individual more than putting yeah. them in boxes. And I mean, the box is what we have to stop. Yeah, I mean, the world has gotten smaller, um, and there were, we were. We seem to have been progressing to a more uh, inclusive and cohesive uh, society where uh, diversity, multiculturalism wasn't such a foreign thing anymore. Yes. Um, you know, same thing with uh, uh, inclusion of the LGBTQ community as well. There's been a shift uh, recently um, and well, the anniversary of Stonewall, the Stonewall riots was just the other day, you know, June 28th. And, and I think it's really wonderful in a sense that the George Floyd protests and the Stonewall protests and all of these various protests mm -hmm. are happening simultaneously. It's, it's strange, right? It's, it's like there's like some cosmic force. Yeah, it's coming to the surface yeah. now. All these little hidden skeletons. Are yeah, to the surface. you know, I have friends from, you know, of all walks of life, you know, all colors and creeds and, and um, I'm happy to say that we are of the mindset that is um, anti-racist. <laughs> uh, I mean, why, what else would you be my friend, right? <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> Um, you know, but uh, my fear is that we've entered into an age where um, it's been legitimized that you can um, blame the blame people. Uh, in any incident that causes some sort of uh, upheaval, it, you deflect to race and you blame that race for the problem. Yes. Uh, and it's very divis divisive because Asian Americans, like you said, are in the war against coronavirus, just like any um, person. And many Asian Americans have never even set foot in China. Asian <laughs> Americans. Even in China, American, right? These are my bottom line friends. They've, got, they've never been to China. Like they see themselves as full-blooded Americans. Mm -hmm. Baseball mm -hmm. games, hot dogs, you know. I'm glad to see there's, they're opening up a bit more in Hollywood. I you know, know, it's not as much as it should be, but they I see a lot more diversity now. I do too, and it's a good thing. I mean, and you know, it was weird because uh, 2019, as I was touring the film festival circuit, we were there was sort of like um, a diversity wave, and 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 uh, Asians were definitely uh, riding high on it with uh, um, Crazy Rich Asians as well as um, Aquafina winning the Golden Globe, and then there was Parasite, which won the Academy Award. Yeah. And in one That's shift, a phenomenal like, film. With, way, yeah. And then in one shift with COVID, it's like suddenly we're like the scourge. Yeah. You know. It changed so it, it all. Yeah. It's worrying. Um, I'm I'm grateful that there is a huge um, faction of society that doesn't think you know divisively and um uh, but it, it what's also worrying is not just the knee-jerk um blame racial blaming and scapegoating and color blinding uh, what's concerning is that um people feel emboldened to actually um act out on the hate verbally physically uh, that's, that's what's alarming it's like we've lost a sense of civility and I think, you know, as a society, if you, there is a crisis, the solution is to come together and deal with the crisis. And we've always done that in the past, but now it just, for some reason, it's been this division. Yes. I mean, crazy. can you imagine if, if when AIDS hit and then if people are attacking gay people? Yeah. Whether they have the rights or not, but just, and just like beating them up, if that would happen, you know, or what sequence think, about it. Think about how crazy that is for a minute, okay, because it really does reflect the craziness we're kind of trying to talk about. You, you're scared. I mean, I think a lot of hate crimes come from being afraid. So you're scared because this AIDS epidemic, this AIDS thing is going on. So you see gay people and you go and beat them up, causing them to bleed, causing them to yell and scream, which gets all those drops, causing all those fluids. 
Yeah. Then get on you. And that's how that's, you catch AIDS, yeah. That's how really stupid, in a, in a sense, it's a perfect example of how totally stupid that kind of blaming hate is, whether it's against a race or a religion or, or a sexual preference or whatever group it is. It, and it just, just goes to show you how, how really self-defeating hate is. Yeah, I mean, you have a choice. It's a choice. It, during a time of a crisis, you, want, you either choose to, you know, uh, be logical and work together cohesively, or you go the other side and you vent anger and hatred and stuff like that. And I, I would think, I would hope that as a society, as a modern, educated, advanced society, that um, the former should prevail. You come together and you look at the data and the science and you say, okay, how do we now manage this crisis together and beat it together. Well, I because love what that, you're doing. I think film is one of the most effective ways to get messages out and to get truth out. The media so is absolutely. You continue doing more. <laughs> you know, before we wrap up, because I, I know we can go forever, but, you know, even doctors and medical professionals, a large chunk of them in America are of Asian descent. And they're being discriminated against. Yeah. Like, they're going to be treated by you because you're Asian. You know, like it's so ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Mm, it's upsetting. You know, it's it's disheartening. Um, and they're on the front lines trying to fight the virus and help people. Yeah. Uh, and the 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 theme of our little short film was that um, it wasn't just about racism. It was about how a mother's loss is a mother's loss. Hate is hate. Injustice is injustice. And that's a, a theme that resonates uh, through all uh, cultures. And hopefully, you know. What I want to know is how could they reverse that sentence on what they, grounds? Uh, the Vincent Chins? Yes. How they could well, have that 25 year sentence on what grounds? You know, um, uh, the, the state ruling about the $3,000 fine and three-year probation was passed. You can't overturn that. So uh, they went and launched a federal yeah. case uh, based on civil rights violations, including racism. Uh, and they won that, but then it was appealed over technicalities, as the legal system often uh, has. On a technicality. Things like that. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, when the courts want to find technicalities, they can find technicalities. Or, or the all-white jury that was. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, yeah. And let, let's be real here. Let's be real. If uh, Vincent Chen's name had been Jones and had he been, excuse me, phrase, tutti fruity colored instead of being uh, Asian background, that, that probably they would have been a lot different. And that's what we're really talking about. And that brings us to another part of it, the systemic. It isn't just the personal, it is the systemic. Mm -hmm. uh, in Hollywood, it certainly has been systemic against Asian actors, that is beginning to change. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that social media and the media and the, the streaming services, one of the problems I think in this country, you know, just as an aside, one of the problems that has gone on is that because we had network television that was responsible to the government, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the stuff that really makes people stop and think didn't ever get on, at least not on the entertainment. I mean, yeah, we had the Jeffersons. And yeah, we had all of the family, but, but you know, to really have serious human connection kind of drama. Now we're getting it. I mean, uh, lately I've been watching, it's, uh, it's an, an Egyptian family here in New Jersey called Rami, R-A-M-Y. And I don't know if you've seen this, either of you, no, I but if you have Hulu available to you, watch this show. Okay. It's mind blowing. It is so good. And, um, you know, it just takes and puts their religion, their ethnicity, their language, their culture, and their attempts to become American and, and just puts it all together 
and it makes you realize what a human drama is going on. Mm. And, and that's, I think that's what the, you were saw, saying earlier, Monica, that film and video can well, do you know that. that. They just recently, well, not, not that recently, but the, uh, revived West Side Story. Mm -hmm. And I happened to watch that a couple months ago, the original. Mm -hmm. There is so much in that story that is said that still exists today. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, Leonard Bernstein, of course, who was a Bostonian. So, he, yay, Leonard Bernstein. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, right, but I what, think this is why they brought it back. Yeah, I would. I would put it into it, people's faces, and I know they're casting it differently, or they have cast it differently. It's not like all white, you know. <laughs> it's a, and um. It's a universal story. Yes, and I'm you hoping they'll those. come out with more, because you know, documentaries or even um, musicals or films. Well, it's interesting because um, when I did Justice for Vincent, I was tempted to do a, a romantic comedy, uh, an Asian romantic comedy, Asian American, and then I said, you know what, it's just been done. Let's go the other way and do a drama, and it was a social justice story, and. People were like, why do you want to do an Asian American social justice story? There are none. I go, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, we have a wealth of stories, and they're not just, quote, Asian American stories. They're American stories. Exactly. And that's the point. Um, and, you know, so, I mean, in our film, we broadened it. Uh, to make it universal, at the end, we pay tribute to victims of other hate crimes like Matthew Shepard and Trayvon Martin and, and Heather Heyer. Um, you know, and we end with a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King. So, um, again, it was like when you are a victim of a hate crime or um, being bullied, you know, just on the brunt, being on the brunt of um, uh, discrimination, uh, there's a commonality that binds the people, uh, not only through a sense of compassion and understanding, but also a sense of fighting for what's right. Yes. Yes. So, it, you know, yeah, I didn't. So much has been hidden for years. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, this happens. It's been happening for centuries, but, you know, we'll just you know, cover it all up. And, Lawrence, um, I have to ask, uh, before we run out of time, we want to make sure we ask, so you can tell people <laughs> how they're going to get to see <laughs> Justice for Vincent. Yes. Uh, okay, well, we're wrapping up our film festival run, um, and uh, I'm talking to a couple of distributors, so fingers crossed it'll be picked up and maybe made available in the fall sometime, I hope, mm -hmm. at least. Well, well, you be sure and let us know, and yeah. we're going to play a part of a trailer, okay? So, um, people can get you know their curiosity peaked, <laughs> so when it is released, they'll all run and buy it. <laughs> see it. There is, Thanks for the plugs, guys. And <laughs> there is something else, of course, folks. In case you haven't picked up on it, in addition to being Asian American, uh, Lawrence belongs to a very special minority group. He is Canadian American. Ah. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm going to call uh, Ryan Reynolds and Ryan Gosling right now. <laughs> <laughs> too funny, too funny. <laughs> so, well, you know, you never know in this country who we're going to be hating next. <laughs> <laughs> you have to laugh or you cry, right? <laughs> it is what it is. Um, you know, yeah, san sanity and civility and compassion will prevail, I hope. I do. Well, that's too. what Matt marks you as a Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold up there. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, gosh, I, I hate to say this, but we've run out of time. And, Lawrence, uh, keep up the work. I, I know Ken and I are so proud of what you've accomplished. Oh, and I want people to know something about Lawrence. He is multi-talented. He's not just like a film actor or a stage actor 
or, or, a writer, a, or a producer or a or TV a host of a show <laughs> or a producer yeah <laughs> or a playwright he's all these things and he's internationally known so Ooh. i hope you will get to know lawrence and uh, we'll be sure and put your information at the bottom of the podcast so i'll well, let out two of the most important things about it monica Wonderful. He, first of all, he's a wonderful doggy daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Love our four legged friends. Yes. Anybody who gets along well with the animals is a special, especially loved on it at his radio. <laughs> and he's got a wonderful sense of humor and warmth. I do. Which you've all gotten person. to see. Yeah. Thank you. And I track ghosts too and interview celebrities. Hey, that was my favorite show, Ghostly Encounters, right? What? <laughs> That's how I got introduced to you. <laughs> like, what have, not, what have I not done? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's more to come your way. I can see it. Well, folks, uh, please enjoy the trailer we're going to show you next. And, Lawrence, it's been wonderful having you on. Like and do stay in touch with us. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Love you guys. Love you too. Bye-bye. $3,000 and three years probation. Half the price of a shiny new car in the Motor City. Is that what the life of a Chinese man, an American citizen, is worth? <laughs> 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 <laughs>